friends have been talking about the Supreme Court case, Caption vs. Massey. I wish I knew more about it so I can't participate better in our various social interactions. I wonder what's on the news. Caption vs. Massey. It's all you care about and it's all we're talking about. I'm Sven Eiffel with Bob Smith and some random lady we found on the streets, and this is a minute in Washington. So, Bob Smith, everyone's been talking about the Caperton vs. Massey case. Care to give us a little bit of background on the case and how the whole fiasco started? Sure thing, Sven. As we all know, the case that actually reached the Supreme Court was all about whether or not judges should be required to step back or recuse themselves from cases involving those who contributed significantly to their campaigns. However, the original dispute between Mr. Caperton and the Massey Energy Company had nothing to do with that. Caperton owned a small coal company in West Virginia that eventually came into competition with the much larger Massey Company. Eventually, Massey ran Caperton's company out of business. Caperton felt that some of the methods Massey used to destroy his company were wrong and unethical, so he sued Massey. The trial court in the case he went to agreed with Caperton and ordered Massey to pay Caperton $50 million. Obviously upset with the decision, Massey appealed the case. The controversy arose when the case reached the West Virginia State Supreme Court. Before the case had reached the state Supreme Court, there had been a judicial election. In the election, the CEO of Massey Energy, Don Blankenship, donated massive sums of money to help Mr. Ben Brent Benjamin get elected to the state Supreme Court. Seeing this as a concern, Caperton and his lawyers asked Benjamin to remove himself from the case. The decision of whether or not to recuse ultimately falls only to the judge in question, so Benjamin refused to remove himself from the case. When the case reached the West Virginia Supreme Court, Benjamin twice cast the deciding vote in favor of Massey. So, this all set up the question that the Supreme Court heard. Should judges be required to recuse themselves when they are broad cases in which one of the parties was a significant campaign donor? This is boring. And gentlemen, welcome to Double Jeopardy! The only court-themed game show in the nation! Today's contestants are Emily and Christopher! The questions that we will be giving them today are based off of the Supreme Court case, Caperton vs. Macy. I'm your host, Steve Barry. The first question is for you, Emily. Which Supreme Court case wrote the majority opinion, and what exactly did he or she say for 10 points? Well, I'm not like that much into law stuff, but I'm pretty sure that Caperton sounds like Cap, and that's a hat. So Justice Babe Ruth obviously made all of the baseball caps the same in all 50 states. That's my final answer. Close. Christopher, five points for the steal. Well, Barry, Justice Andrew Kennedy wrote the majority opinion. In it, he said that from now on, all judges will be required to recuse themselves when they are presented with cases in which one of the litigants was a significant campaign contributor. He stated that judges should be recused when there is a probability of bias in the judge. I think that's wrong. I'm sorry, Emily, that was actually correct. Five points to Christopher. Christopher, since you got the last, you got the steal, you get the next question as well. Okay, name the courts the case went through before reaching the United States Supreme Court. There were two. The first was a trial court, and the second was the West Virginia State Supreme Court. Great job, and another ten points. Many people don't know that the only court of appeals in West Virginia is also the state Supreme Court. Okay, Emily, here's a special bonus question for 20 points. If you get it right, you win. But if you get it wrong, and Chris answers correctly, he wins by 10 points. So, Emily, how many justices distended? Which two justices wrote dissenting opinions? And can you summarize both of the, of the dissenting opinions? <clears throat> I think I'm going to find a friend. I'm sorry, Emily. Wrong game show. Christopher, for the steal and the win! It was a 5-4 decision, so four of the justices dissented. Chief Justice Roberts wrote one of the dissenting opinions, and Scalia wrote the other. In Roberts' opinion, he raised important questions about how exactly the majority's opinion would be implemented. Questions like, how much of a contribution is too much? And, how do you define a probability of bias? In his opinion, Scalia criticized the decision, saying the Supreme Court 
shouldn't be involved in fixing problems that he sees as unfixable. I object, Your Honor. Emily, this isn't actually a court. But on the other hand, congratulations, Christopher! You're this week's winner of Double Jeopardy! You've won the satisfaction of winning and nothing else. I'm sorry, Emily. I guess today just wasn't your day. Or ever. Tune in next week, unless we're taken off the air by then. Hi, I'm Illinois State Senator Tanner Corum. By now you've probably heard about the Supreme Court's recent decision on the case Caperton versus Massey. By limiting the influence that our most wealthiest individuals can have on the judicial system, our system is now more fair for all Illinois residents. This is a great example about how your Supreme Court can have an influence and make our, all of our lives better. Thank you for your time. Well, now I know a lot, a lot about Caperton versus Massey. I can finally keep up with what my friends are talking about. Hey Mac, it's me, Emily. I was going to ask if you wanted to do something today, but I don't think you know too much about Caperton vs. Massey. That's my favorite court case. I only hang out with people who know that court case. Oh, I know more than you think. <laughs>